video tag. I'll be talking about the instance called Denua Reliquary, located at the north end of the Idian Depth. It's got a pretty long cooldown, so that's annoying. First, before we start in the actual recording, this is similar to IS in the sense that you have to buy a morph called the Denua Reliquary Wiki. And you use 10 ID shards that you can farm in ID this area. Look at that ping. To morph into them. You can also buy them on the broker if people sell them. It's kind of pricey though. When you start, do not move. The person who moves first is the Templar, because the ads will immediately aggro everyone. Did I say ads or eggs? You kill them in the order of Obscura, Lapimala, or Lapalima. Lapalima, that's a weird name. And then the Novan. It's important to use CCs and stuff to keep them away from everyone because they hurt, and you don't want people to be taking unnecessary damage. My team layout for this is entirely ranged. That's not necessary, but it helps a lot to have ranged classes. It's not impossible with melee, but it's harder. Doable pull harder. Once you kill the final ad, the boss will decide that she's angry and come down and attack you. I actually show my stats here. My fire and water resist are pretty nice. Water much higher because of the winter circle, but if you have DCs or you need to wait, you can leave this mob alive with some HP left before you actually start. Because you have a 15 minute time window from when you start the boss. The Cursed Queen Mudo. She's a pretty cool looking boss. When it comes to remove shocking, it's really important that you never use the remove shock for bosses or the bosses AoE, but only for the ads because they will Aethers hold you for, I'm going to say 10 seconds around that. You can use it at the start because she won't spawn ads right away. That starts at 75%, but just a word of warning, the ads AoE, or I think the AoE, AoE Aethers hold for 10 seconds or so, and that can really, really mess you up. If he gets both the healers or something terrible happens. When you're downing her HP from 100 to 75, it's pretty much just straightforward. Tank it in the middle, and everyone stand towards the edge of the circle. Don't stand in the water because even though it's not lava, it'll kill you. I guess it's not really water, is it? It's more like some kind of weird liquid mercury. Oh no, the music in the background's gone. I'm gonna have to refresh it in a second. Not that there's anything wrong with me just talking straight up, but it's nice to have a little bit of background music accompanying me. NCSoft's soundtrack for this 4.0 patch is really good, in my opinion. Okay, you can see she's just doing a bunch of AoEs that you can stand a range for. And now she's doing a blizzard. That one's frontal, as you saw right there. It's directly in front of her. The projectiles shoot on the ground as well to give you an indication of where it's uh, it's an angle in front of her, but it's not too bad. Oh, the music started up again. Yay! Okay, if you're a chanter here, you have to have elemental screen because when the ads spawn, you pop that and maybe you get all the ads on you, but... That would be a bad thing. Uh, the elemental defense and the physical defense are important though because the mobs do hurt and every bit of defense helps. This boss actually has multiple phases. She's not as easy as 100 to 0, unfortunately. But the first phase involves a bunch of ads spawning. You go in the order of Reaper, then Drake, then Bodyguard. I think there's a set order in terms of which mobs are most important. So you could probably find it online if it's a different order each time, but I don't think it is. I think there's just a priority list of what's more important to kill. And while this is all happening, the boss will be on top of one of various pillars that are outside of the circle. And she'll be attacking somebody randomly. It happens to be the me this time. It's just to watch out for that and make sure you heal people. Get out of the way when she puts an AoE ice shard on the ground because that will do damage and slow you, and it's more things the cleric has to worry about healing. By the way, when you get to the last ad, if you have physical classes, you can always have the, or not physical, melee classes, you can always have the ranged people start attacking the boss again to DPS her. 
while the everyone else kills the ads. I don't know if that's the most optimal way of doing it, but... Here's the point where she's going to stay up there and you have to nuke her from afar. So it's not exactly melee love. If you haven't noticed, by the way, I'm running a protection mansion because elemental defense is good. Then she'll come randomly down and start AoEing, then start attacking, and it's the same deal where you just keep her facing away from the group and DPS her. Nothing too big or special here. She's a fan of freezing spheres of various things. This is where Word of Protection really good. Without the is, Word of Protection really good. Ganashi is 50%. They actually killed our tank. Not the biggest deal in the world. You can live with that. Just res him and then... You can continue. Because you'll actually reset, because this is the next phase. Where clones spawn all around on each pillar. The significant thing about this phase is that some of the clones will say special words. They'll appear above their heads. I believe the words are... Hold on, let me look for it. Death is not the end? Yeah, death is not the end. So when that happens, all you have to do is look for one of the mobs that says it. More than one will say it. Mark it with a number and then just go DPS it. This isn't anything that you can just sit around because they can cast a skill called Vengeful Orb. A big AoE. It doesn't kill you, but it hurts a lot. You can kill it before that goes off, and even if the cast bar completes, there's actually a couple seconds where it delays after, so you don't have to get it right if the cast bar finishes. Anyway, the next wave spawns of clones. You just have to kill them again. This happens three times, by the way. So it's clones, clones, clones. Attack of the clones. You just do the same thing where you DPS them down. Not too much else. Again, she's casting best vengeful orb. It's harder, of course, if you have less range classes. You'll probably have to take the vengeful orb, but it's something you can deal with, so it's not a big deal, to be honest. Okay, final wave. Getting whispers. No! I'm trying to record. Okay, I get attacked by the boss this time, or the clone. Another thing I'll point out is that the Templar can actually taunt some of them. Only the ones that are in range. There's going to be some that are in range and some that are out of range. What do I mean by that? I mean that if the Templar tries to taunt it, he will run into the water and die. Because they are farther than the range of a taunt. Which I think is 17 meters or 15. I don't remember the numbers, so Templars you'll know. You can taunt some of them, but not all of them. The point of taunting is to keep the mobs from all focusing one person, because they do do special skills and they will hurt and probably kill someone if they're all on them. But that being said, the clone phase is done. So now you get back to 100% boss, but this is the final phase, which will aptly be named Phase 3. Shock and surprise. This is going to be a combination of adds and her AoEing and doing one fear at 50%. It's going to get to the point where you possibly start ignoring the adds when she's lower, but for now, adds spawn, pop elemental screen. Focus on, let's see, Obscura, then Labalima, then Jotun. Seems to be anything that's Ghost, then anything that's a Squid, then anything that's the rest. So, I'm taking that as Magical Class mobs first, then Magic slash Physical mobs, then Physical mobs. Because the Jotuns only do big 3k physical damage hits, so it's not a big deal. And you can snare them, keep them away from people. You have to run away from the two if they're on you. Again, it's not too bad. And she'll start nuking some random person. Some poor unlucky soul from afar. It'll probably be someone that can, that can buff or heal. So a chan or a cleric. Better for the chaner to be honest, so the cleric can heal. Okay, when those die, you go back to DPSing the boss from afar, I believe. Or did she disappear? Oh, she moved. It's hard to see because you can't angle your camera up and look at the platform at the same time. I mean, you can, but it'll be kind of weird.
make sure you refresh your elemental scrolls like I just did. She comes down, AoEs, and then it's back to the good old DPS. She kills uh, a couple of people too. Again, not the biggest deal in the world. You can live with one or two deaths here or there. Which is nice about this instance because it would be painful otherwise. This is a recording of my first actual successful run, by the way. So she's going to start randomly going up and down, warping back and forth, hitting people from afar, spawning ads, and just being annoying. It's nothing too bad, though. You can just keep DPSing her from afar. Just remember, you have a 15-minute time limit, so you got to keep that in mind when you do this. And I wish they would keep a timer up, but I'm sure they'll add it in a later patch, DLR style, like NCSoft always does. It's just pew 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 at this point. Not much more to say, although she's about 50%, so this is where she does her AoE fit. Now, the thing about that is when she does it, she'll be facing hopefully the tank, but it could be any direction. What you have to do when she casts the fear is to stand behind her, directly behind her. Well, I guess not directly. You can be in a certain angle behind her, but the general idea is you want her back facing you. Because it's a frontal fear. So let's see. Demented scream. Her back is where I am. Yeah. See that? I also popped a while right now. Below 50%. It's good to save it for after the fear. You can pop it at 50, but people might die under the fear somehow. So just pop it after the fear. That's the logic I have anyway. You can do it a different time. So what do we have here? We have the ghost, and then the drake, then whatever else. Yeah, see they switch priorities. Ghosts, mobs first, and then things that can fly, I suppose, would be the next order. Always, always keep your protection and inspiration mentors refreshed as a channel. Like, I know our job isn't too hard, guys, but you have to make sure. I haven't popped a Theric Field there because people were taking lots of damage. It's good to call out the fact that you're popping it for the Templar if they have Disco Ball or the 2k. Oh, I'll mention this. 4k for a Templar does nothing in this instance for the Asmo ones anyway. It's like, um, the damage she does isn't physical at all, so there's no reason to use it. As far as I know. I was, or he was told to just use 2k's all the time. But as you can see, now that she's lower in HP, she starts wanting adds more, more and more. And you have to start killing them. But it's fine, because you can handle them up to a certain point, which is when the boss is about to time out. And when that happens, you just go for the boss and try to kill her before the time runs out. It's pretty crazy. I'm holding back my quickness as long as I can for the DPS. She's almost dead though, as you can see, 25%. Almost. I find it hard to run out of that freezing AoE if you're already in it. Not a big deal. So we're gonna just start kiting around the Jotun from the looks of it, which is fine because he's just a weaker mob, I'll say. Does a 3 to 4k strike physical hit, and other than that, not a big deal. Templar died, not a big deal, just keep DPSing. Someone else is going to be tanking, but that's okay. I even popped quickness at 25% because you want to maximize the DPS when he gets to 25 and below. Because that's the point where it doesn't matter how many ads there are, you just want to kill the boss and get it over with. So mana upkeep and CD upkeep for the last 5, no, not 5, 15%. 15 to 25, but they get to the point where the ads roll up and you just need to burn, burn, burn. Here come the ads, I'm just going to ignore them and burn. There's the Aether's Hold, it happened to me once. It's pretty long. Again, never use knockdown or remove shocks for the boss, just for the ads. She's going to be Aether's Hold for a long time. And you can kite around these mobs, not too bad. Templar popped in Fury Providence. You know, just running in circles. Everyone's DPSing. So AoE randomly. Cleric's going to have her work cut out, or his work cut out, but as you can see, not a big deal, and goodbye. 
I recorded this a while ago. A while ago being, how many days is that? Five days ago, so until now, today's the 14th, I only just made a video. Well, I guess it's the 13th night, 14th morning, technically. And if you kill the boss up on one of these pillars, it's not the end of the world. You can actually loot her from the bottom on the circle. It's just you have to make sure the loot's free for all so that everyone can loot it, because we're all confused. We're like, oh, how to open boss? I mean, it's pretty straightforward as the terms of the fight. You just have to know when, which skills happen, what cooldowns to save for certain points, and when to burn the boss and to keep a timer just to make sure you don't run out of time. So, it's one of those things where if you know it well enough, you can do it no problem. It's a piece of cake. But that's the only thing that gets in the way of you being able to do the instance. Because it's not impossible where everyone's taking massive damage and you have to, like, deal with ads that are impossible to kill and stuff like that. Alright, so, my first run, what did I get from my box? Open, open, open. Oh, I have to show off the Legion, of course, because I'm a total dude. Silly me. Got Mythic Armor, that's what I got. And the cool thing about this instance is that actually you get to choose what piece you want. Whether it be weapon or armor. The only thing that's random are the tooting stat, which are the secondary window stats. They'll always have the same things. You'll have uh, energy deboost or a boost, HP, etc. But the numbers will vary depending. I'm just previewing the armor here because I'm in amazement. I just go with the breastplate because it's the biggest piece and it has the most visual effect. And it's actually kind of useful, so I suck at HP and I use it now. Looks funny with the Karun boots, but I've since replaced those two with Eternal. Okay, so it says that it requires tuning. You also get some random crafting items and stigma stuff, not stigma stuff, mana stone stuff and Idion, yay! and other random items. 